Morty, it's time to do some ear training. Oh, jeez, Rick. So, uh, today we're going to figure out some Django solos. One Django solo, anyway. I was at my student's house earlier, and I saw him transcribing this one. And uh, I always stress the importance of ear training. And also a very specific kind of ear training, because ear training means different things for different people. And I'm just going to show you what I mean by ear training in this video. Like, this topic has been coming up quite a lot recently in my world. You know, some person got so pissed off at me for releasing the Rarely Legrand lesson. So royally pissed off that he got so angry at me, he blocked me on Facebook. I didn't even say anything. He's just so upset that I released le these lessons. And his reason, and this guy's a professional musician as far as I know. Never met him. But um, this, his argument is that these, this play, Birelli's playing is so advanced that no one can even learn from them. And the fact that he's a professional musician and he thinks this way tells me a lot of how, I've never heard him play, but how bad of a musician he must really be. And it's proof that anyone can be a professional musician if you think this way. The truth is, if you have good ears, if you think like a musician and not like an instrumentalist, then you can learn from anyone. You can learn from Birelli, you can learn from the most advanced musicians with a, and still be not so technically advanced, as long as you think like a musician. So what is a musician and what is an instrumentalist? Well, have, different people have different definitions for this. But for me, a musician truly understands not necessarily a theoretical term, but understands what they are doing. Kind of like when you speak a language, let's say you have, back in the day when people couldn't go to school, a lot of illiterate people, but yet, you know, these people never went to school, but spoke fluent whatever language, fluent English. They can, they understood everything they were saying. They, they may not have understood the actual grammar of how the language worked, but they can communicate fluently. And Whereas an instrumentalist to me is someone who can maybe reproduce the sounds but have no idea of what they're saying. Well, let me give you an example. So I don't know um, which country you guys are living in, what your mother tongue is. I'm not even sure what my mother tongue is. But uh, let's say I say 350. So sorry for my pronunciation, but I just said the exact same thing in five different languages. So if you spoke English, right away, you would have probably recognized 350. And if you spoke French, you probably would figure out right away 350. Basically, I said 350, 350 in all languages. What, was, what language was it? I don't remember. But yeah, so an instrumentalist would probably be able to memorize the sounds, the phonetics of what I said, but they wouldn't. And they might even get it accurately, but they wouldn't understand what was going on. So it's not fluent. And the fluency is what is very, very important. And for this, I think it's extremely important to spend a lot of time visualizing music in your head. So what I'm going to do now is going to transcribe a Django solo. I don't have a guitar in my hands. I've never transcribed a solo. I don't think so. If I did, it would have been almost 20 years ago. So uh, I'm going to figure out this Django solo for you without a guitar in my hands at all. And I'm going to tell you exactly what he's doing just by listening. Because I've listened to so much Django, so much gypsy jazz, swing music, whatever you want to call it, that it's just like a language for me. And there's still room for improvement, I'm going to admit. It. I might even make mistakes here. We'll see. But basically, I'm just going to listen to the solo and tell you what he's thinking, what he's doing, and where he's playing it. I'll try. So let's go. So I know th I've listened to this song. I played this song, the song, the chords. I know it's a G, E flat 7, and then turn around, blah, blah, blah. So, bum, bum, dang. so I know that he's playing this on the seventh fret of the G string. 7, 8, 7. D, G, uh, sorry, D, G, B. It's probably saying out of tune, sorry. S, O, C. No, ni. That's a third, major third. B. That B is played on the B, D string, 9th fret. So that's a G major arpeggio. So 9, 7, 8, 7, 10, 9. And that leads to the flat 7 of the E flat 7 chord. So 9, 6, 8. Ah, 
Then after that's the wrong E flat seven is eight seven six. No no no. And that's a triad. It's E flat, B flat, G, E flat. So that's eighth fret, fifth fret of G string, then sixth fret on the A string. Ah, no, no, no. I'm probably singing out of tune. I'm not a good singer. But that, that's the root of the E flat, six, the sixth fret of the A string, six, five, four, down to the flat seven of the E flat seven. I'm using theoretical terms because I know the vocabulary. I know I study theory, but it's not, I'm not even thinking of theory. I just know what the chords are and I can just see in my head and I can just, I can hear, recognize and see in my head what's going on. That targets the, the D natural. Classic swing lick over a five chord, over a D7. C, uh, I can't sing, I think that's third fret. No, no, that's third fret, the, uh, the note C to D. F sharp D. Uh, F sharp A. F sharp A, G. No, no, no. Go four, five on the D string, fourth fret G. Aha, so now over the turnaround, over the D7, he's doing a little diminish, or D7 flat 9, playing A, C, E flat, and then D natural. So that's a flat 9, a 13 flat 9, or flat 9, 13, whatever you want to call it. Yep, so that's a nice one. That's a D13 flat 9. So A, C, E flat, B. Grab a guitar if you don't believe me. Try it. A, G, D, top the second A, D, D, that's the third again, D, D, A, G, da, 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 that's a G natural, so now that's the third of E flat 7, da, 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 that lands on the note E, which is the sixth of G major. And with the open, you can hear the open E and the, the closed E on the B string. Ah, oh, what's that? Da, 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 da. Ah, that's B. So he's thinking of a G major chord. B, D, E, G. Yeah, da, da, da. That's, okay, so the same thing he did over the E flat 7, the first chord, not the first chord, the first A. Over the D7, he's going from on the D7 root. Um, D, yeah, where is that? No, 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 no. So three, two, one. If it's on the D string, I'm not sure. No, 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 no. It's just a scale, G major scale. So it's just a G major scale going down until the the D, the note D. So this is. B string, uh, G and B string alternating on the fourth fret of the G string. It's uh, the note B natural, and he's alternating down, up, down, down, up, down, or something like that between the G and B strings over a B seven chord. Da, da, da. So that's B seven chord, B C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, A. Da, 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 da. So that G natural over a B seven. So that. I already learned something right here. Over a B7 chord, a B7 in the key of G is the three dominant. Over the three dominant, when Django adds little extensions, he likes to add the B, the, sorry, the G natural, which he does right here. Ah, now it's on the E7. He lands on G sharp. Chromatic, four, three, two, Ah, so now he's thinking like a B minor 6 chord, so one of the, well he's not necessarily thinking B minor 6, but it's a shape that he likes to use, so uh, it just turns out to be B minor 6, so, uh, 4, 3, 2, uh, G sharp, G natural, F sharp, no, no, D natural, B, da, da. that's an A natural there, the letter A7. Uh, he's playing, I can already predict where he's going, I know this lick. It's an A7 arpeggio, it's an A9 arpeggio, played with open strings. So... So we can hear the triad, A triad, the seventh, 
B to C sharp, uh, C sharp to E natural, G, then to D. So that's A9 chord. Sing me A9 chord. Da -da -da -da. So that's A, A flat, uh, A chromatic down to uh, F sharp. Now we're landing on D on the D7 chord. Da -de -da -bo -de -da. Ah, so now he's kind of targeting the note E natural in this line. So it's a very beautiful thing to do. To target the note E, he does. Da -da 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 -de -da. So F sharp, A, G, or D sharp, F sharp, D, D, D. Ba ba ba. Like we said, we saw this. We did this many times already. Da da da. That's on the D seven, the root going down to the flat seven. Same thing, an octave lower. Ah, da da da. D. He likes to go to the thirteen. He's all G. Ba da. D G. Now we're G major chord. Ni. Uh, so this is a G major arpeggio up to the note G on top. Da 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 D. E fl a flat, so it's a G major, and then correct with uh, connect with a scale G A B flat. The A note is a passing tone. B flat. Now we've landed on E flat seven. Nee, da, 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 da. Uh, singing out of tune. Nee, no, 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 no. That's that uh, same thing. Five, three, one. Chromatic down to flat seven. And going back up. Da -di. That's to the note D. Li -di -di. Chromatic down. Now we're on uh, just a bluesy lick. Ten nine eight. La -da -da -di. A cadence phrase. That's D sharp. Uh, I can't sing in two. Sorry guys. No no. That's D sharp E. G D G uh, D D G resolution. So it's a bluesy lick that Django like to use. That's the root. When G da 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 bo da be da. So what's that root? G A G E G A T E. B flat. It's just an E flat major triad. So if E flat major triad, no, no, that's an F sharp. We're, we're now the turnaround, like uh, the turnaround to the turnaround. <laughs> G, so F sharp. That's the major seven of G major. And here's uh, another cadence phrase. La di da e g e. Mm, da da da. That's uh, D. Four, three, two. So that's C, B, A. D, D, G. So yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's all played on the 12th fret, between the 12th and 15th fret. Ah, interesting. Diana Bluesy. That's a flat seven over a G major. So over a G major chord, he's thinking G7, like a bluesy sound, F natural. I think that's E flat. Dee 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 ding. Oh no no, that's not E flat. That was a F. Was so made a mistake. So that da 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 da. That's an F natural. That's an E. That makes an E flat nine chord. F over E flat seven is E flat nine. That's the ninth. So then that's the E flat. Then da 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 back to D. So it's just a uh, there's voice leading going on. He's not playing big arpeggios. He's just doing voice leading from G to F natural to E flat then to D and following chords this way. D D D. That's the same crap. Uh, the same chromatic thing I told you. Ten nine eight on the E string. Da 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 D. Just a scale down to the fifth, then back up to the root on the G major. Arpeggio down. Don't arpeggio. 
He likes to do this. Again, over B7 in the key of G. Eight, ten, eight, seven. Da da da. Da da da. No, B string. Ten, eight, ten, eight, seven. G string. Nine, A, D sharp. B, B. So now it's in E7. So then B is the pivot note to lead us to E7. So from that B on the D string, ninth fret, you go to the sixth fret. Which is the G sharp, the third of E7. Whoops, missed something, but I know what it is. Da, da, da. That's 3, 5, flat 7 over E7. G sharp, B, D. He likes this. Charlie Christian did this too. I wonder if Charlie Christian got this from Django. This is from 1937. Hmm. Maybe Charlie Christian stole this from uh, Django because this is a quintessential Charlie Christian lick. Or idea concept and Charlie I, I don't know who got it from who or if they even got it from each other but uh, Charlie Christian didn't play this lick exactly like this but he took the same concept the same shape so uh, G sharp B D then jumps up to the C sharp which is the 13 of E7 seven nine seven that's G sharp seven nine seven on E string then to ninth fret of the B Arpeggio. Ah, that's A natural. Ah, so that it's the same thing he did on the E7 and the first the B section of the first chorus. So the E7 he does uh, he's thinking um gee, B minor six over E7. Here he's thinking E minor six over A7. So nine eight seven. Do do G E Aha. So then it's descending like A7 arpeggio. Da, da, da. Ah, six. That's the ninth of A. You can hear it lands on the note B. No, no, no. That's uh, the B natural over A7, which is ninth. So now over the two dominant, he like to think the ninth. D, the, over the D7. Is that on D7? Yeah, so with D7, now he's thinking augmented, D augmented, A sharp if you want, or B flat. And then he goes, D, da, da, that's F sharp, E, D, da, da, da. He likes to do that, you see? Da, 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 7, 6, 5 on the G string. Da, 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 da. 5, uh, that's A to F sharp on the, and over D7. Then resolve. Just a G major, I don't know. F sharp G B. Arpeggio, G major arpeggio. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, I need to listen to this again. No. So that's the ninth fret of the D string. And one note per string, so 9787. Seven. Just a shape. And that's another shape. That's 8686. Eight, D, G, B, E. Gosh, it's really hard for me to think this way, like in all these theoretical terms, guys. I just see it in my head. I'm not even thinking of like theory or anything. I just hear and see it. I can reproduce it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, he's basically outlining an E flat 7 chord shape. That's, it's the same crap. That's a B to D natural. The same crap we talked about. He did many times already. Uh, on the dominant chord, the root going after the flat seven. He did the same lick earlier. D sharp, E, G, B, B, G. There. And so that's what I mean. You have to be able to visualize in your head what's going on and reproduce and that's when you know you're on your way to becoming a much better musician rather than an instrumentalist a parrot and we didn't even talk about time feel phrasing or anything but that's already what we just covered were the notes and being able to hear them and relay them to the harmony and that's just one as one aspect there's phrasing and you can learn so much 
from just listening if you know how to listen intelligently and I did this without a guitar in my hand that's why I can I still improve even though I haven't practiced guitar in I don't know two two years two three years because I mainly use the guitar to teach and to practice violin and bass these days but even without touching the guitar I'm still improving on the guitar because when I listen to music I listen intelligently I hear something that I like and when I grab my guitar I can very quickly reproduce it either right away or with very few attempts so I hope this proves useful to you and I don't know I'm not doing this to show off really it's not it's trust me it's not so impressive this is really what musicians should be able to do and I know music some musicians who can do this way better than me really I'm just average so uh, yes you know what you must do